Hello, everybody, and you are very, very welcome to the masterclass. I'm going to say podcast. <laughs> I also do have a podcast. So you're very welcome to our webinar masterclass. I am just locating a file for you, a free gift that I have for you. Uh, improve your sleep, improve your health. And this is an ebook for you for showing up today, if I can find it here now. I did have it and I de deleted it by mistake. So I will upload this now in just a second. Here we go, there it is. Fantastic. So if you locate your sidebar there, you will see it coming up there. So you can download that whenever you like throughout this presentation. That's a free gift for you for showing up today. So I'm just going to check and make sure if everyone can type in the chat box, if you can see and hear me OK. And I think we can. Everything's good. Great, great, great. So let's begin. So you're very welcome. Five surefire ways to get a better to get better sleep. And right now there are so many people who are not sleeping well as a result of the current pandemic situation that we're in at the moment. And an awful lot of this has got to do with the stress that we're experiencing, the uncertainty, the worry, uh, concerns. And we know stress has a massive impact on our ability to relax. And I think really that is what's missing for, for many people is the ability to relax because we naturally can relax, which enables us to sleep well. So this is what's really missing, in my opinion, is our ability to relax. We're on so high alert. And even before this pandemic, um, a lot of people had difficulties with anxiety, them in their head hit the pillow, just thoughts just come barging into their heads at night, which was stopping them from getting asleep at night time. And even having a deep sleep, so deep sleep is really important for our good quality sleep. We'll be touching on all that throughout this webinar, this masterclass. And now more than ever, I really feel that it's so important to get sleep because sleep impacts us on a physical level, so our immune system. And we need our immune system to be really, really strong right now at this time. And uh, sleep can do that for us. So I'll be touching on that throughout the presentation. So let's get into this. Okay, so this is what you're going to get from this presentation. You're gonna get really 100% crystal clear on why sleep is so important. And that might seem like something obvious, but so many people are not aware of how important sleep is. When people think of being healthy, they think of uh, going on, um, eating proper foods. I was gonna say diet, but I don't like the word diet. Diet doesn't work for everybody, but um, eating healthy foods, eating healthily and exercise but so many people overlook sleep as part of our lifestyle and i'm going to tell you why in this presentation why sleep is so so critically important sleep impacts every single area of our life it it impacts every single cell in our body so and massively on our immune system as well and on our mood so much more. So I'm going to go through that in this presentation as well. So I'm going to show you five ways, five strategies that you can implement to start getting sleep. And if you implement these, start implementing these, and a lot of these are habitual, like everything else. Um, and if you start implementing them, you will, you will find that you will sleep so much better at night. So you're going to get real insight into what it takes to get yourself sleep and so that you can have the best night sleep ever that you've probably only ever dreamed of. So many people wake up in the morning and say, oh, I wish, I wish I could just get one night of sleep throughout the whole night without waking up. Now, we do wake up during the night time uh, and we don't remember it. So I'll talk a little bit about that. We don't necessarily remember it. it's to do with our sleep cycles, but we normally drift off back to sleep again and don't even notice. So a full night's sleep really helps you to complete each of these cycles and really get good quality sleep. And my promise to you is that you're going to walk away with actionable steps that you can use and start sleeping tonight. So I noticed some of you on here at the moment. And uh, let me see who have we got on. We've got a good few people on at the moment. And um, John Fitzgerald, Gweno. Hi, Gweno. Nice to see you here. John Donnelly is on. Joni is on. 
lots of people on this evening. So welcome, 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 everybody. So many of you people do already know me, but for anyone who doesn't, I am a certified health and wellness coach, a sleep science coach and author. My book is How to Get a Good Night's Sleep. And it's available in ebook, it's available in audio, and of course, paper back as well. I am an online trainer and I do have my podcast, which is called Empowering Family Health. And I absolutely love it. I will be doing a six week Corona sleep series coming up on the 10th of March, starting on the 10th of March, and my Corona sleep series, because a lot of people have been asking me um about sleep and how they can sleep better especially around this pandemic i am married as well and that's my little daughter leah she is now 10 and she is just incredible i love her to bits <laughs> we all love her we love our children don't we um i did lose one of my daughters megan i lost megan in 2007 she died on the day that she was due carried her full term and she died on the day she was due so many people ask me why did i get into the whole area of sleep so when i lost megan uh, it was a really tragic time for me um, because my son that I had prior to Megan was um, out of an abusive, uh, it was it was, it was was a traumatic abusive event. And so I was terrified to have children when I eventually did, after all my counselling and all the rest, uh, agree. And I was quite happy to have Megan. We lost her on the day she was due. So it was a massive, massive uh, trauma event in my life. And um, what I discovered to you know, the couple of years after that was how powerful we are as human beings, because I met a wonderful spiritual lady who helped me really, I suppose, rediscover myself again. I really, I believe so many people, so many of us don't actually know who we are, what makes us tick, what really makes us happy. And I discovered a lot of that. That was the start of my my journey when I lost Megan in 2007. And uh and how I got into sleep then was um, I went on the whole health and wellness journey, did the Reiki, did the, I'm a massage therapist, I'm um, a reflexologist. And uh, I wrote the book when I met my mentor, my mentor, Pat Slattery, who advised me to write my book. And uh, of course, I didn't know what to be writing, what, what to write my book about. And I realized that so many people at the time, my clients, my massage clients were not sleeping well, they were exhausted. They didn't have enough energy to play with their kids. Their one wish was, I wish I could just have enough energy um, to play with my kids, go walk with them, go out on the bike, whatever. And um, so that was why I wrote the book on how to get a good night's sleep. And I discovered so much more about sleep and some scientific research that just blew my mind. And I decided there and then that I have got to write this book, get it out, and also create some online courses around this topic because it is absolutely essential. It's crucial. Sleep is not a luxury. It's essential. So that is why I love sleep. My own personal journey, I did not sleep very well on many occasions throughout my life. My father drank quite an awful lot. I was living in a house with 10 people. I was the only one working. So it could have been two three o'clock in the morning again I eventually got asleep after all the the noise calmed down and my father went to bed and uh, I was up early for work the next morning I was so tired it was it was I'll never forget it uh, I used to sneak into the ladies bathroom and put my head against the wall and just snooze there for as long as I could <laughs> I'd go missing and uh I, I was driving at the time as well. I was I was driving very early and uh, it was actually really, really dangerous how tired I was driving my car. Um, and fast forward, when I got married, my husband snored so loudly. He took the roof down and we used to have so many arguments about it. He thought I was exaggerating. And it turned out anyway, a few years later, that he was diagnosed with sleep apnea, which I will be talking about in this presentation because it is a very serious sleep disorder and a lot of people are not aware that they do actually have it so I'll be touching on that as well so just to move on I've been on several radio interviews and um, I've been in the newspapers and on tv and lots and lots of podcasts I am an award-winning entrepreneur and president of our local club in a Thai Toastmasters I've met lots of people along my journey um, Mattress Mick many, many of you may be familiar with Mattress Mick here in Dublin uh, down the bottom he's holding my book there he came to my my book launch so I was quite privileged to have him at my book launch and many other people as well I've met along the way and here are some of the um 
uh, organizations or uh, places that I've worked with or radio interviews I've done. So, so five ways to get sleep success. So in my opinion, the very first step is understanding sleep. Because if you don't understand something, you're not going to respect it. And if you don't respect something, you're not going to prioritize it. So that is my number one way to your sleep success is understanding sleep. Managing stress, because stress impacts everything. When you are living, of, and we, we have stress, everybody has stress, and there is good stress and there's a bad stress. And it's important to notice the difference and to get the balance right. Everything is about balance, moderation. But there is a lot of stress going on in the world at the moment. I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about what not to do when you wake up at night. And this may surprise you. Also, do you have a sleep disorder? So I'm going to be talking about that, what you can do. And there's many, many sleep disorders which, which are medical. And there's also many other sleep problems that you may encounter as well. So I'll be talk, touching on them, talking about that and your environment. So I'm going to be talking about the circadian rhythm, which is super important. I cannot stress being aligned with your circadian rhythm enough. It, it's so, so super important. So I'll be getting into all of that. OK, so. I'm going to talk about this is a lovely quote from Napoleon Hill and really when there is something that you are setting out to achieve to be successful in, this is a lovely quote that I like to apply to it, knowledge and purpose. There is one quality which one must possess to win, so to succeed. And that is the definiteness of purpose, the knowledge of what one wants and a burning desire to possess it. So there's so many people that don't actually realize what they do want out of life. Do you want to get a good night's sleep? You would be surprised. There are some people who brag that they only need three or four hours of sleep. I am not kidding. And sleep is absolutely essential for so many things. Your immune system right now at the moment, you need to keep your immune system strong and you need at least between seven and nine hours of sleep. It's different for everybody. It doesn't mean everyone needs nine hours of sleep. And I'm talking about a healthy adult, by the way. There are different amounts of sleeps for uh, different age categories. Babies obviously need more and kids because they're growing and developing. But I'm talking about a healthy adult between seven and nine typically uh, hours. And it's very, very individual. So having the knowledge as well, um, knowing what it is that you want, um, because that's where you'll start to respect and that is where you will start to um, to value it. And that is, that is just so crucial when you want to succeed in something because it comes from the inside, something that you truly want, not because somebody else wants it for you. So that's really, really important. So what is your perspective? Let's have a look at what your perspective is. How do you think about sleep? And I love to talk about this because our language, how we speak to ourselves or how we speak in general about anything has a lot uh, to say about how successful we will be in achieving that. So for many people, they say things like, I don't have time to sleep. Are you one of those people? Let's be honest, um, name and shame. <laughs> have you ever said, I don't have time for sleep? Have you ever said something like, when I finish doing this, then I'll go to bed? I know I have in the past. And really, you are denying yourself of your sleep. You are not prioritizing your sleep. And that's that's literally what you're doing. So mind the language. What are you saying about sleep? What is your relationship to sleep? How do you relate to sleep? What is your perspective? This is so important. Another one, I'll sleep when I'm dead. We often joke about that. We hear people saying that, but seriously, words have energy. Uh, really, words do have energy. And be mindful about how you speak about sleep, how you speak about anything, anything that you want to achieve in life. Really be mindful of how you speak about it. So understanding sleep. So in order to do anything well, we must understand the process. And I like to use the analogy of the car here because if you imagine, I'm sure many of you drive here, when you started learning how to drive, you had to learn how to operate the car in order to get the best out of the car, to get your car to run at its best. So 
you may remember that you learned what the clutch was for, what the brake was for, what the accelerator pedal was for. And now when you understand what those pedals do and the, the clutch and all of those other bits and bobs, now you know how to use them effectively and at the right time. And also you service your car regularly as well because you want your car to run longer to get the longevity from the car. It's the same with sleep. It's exactly the same with sleep. When you understand what it is you need to do to get optimal sleep that will help you have longevity in your life. And it has been shown there is cells in your body. Um, I forget the name of them now off the top of my head. I will remember uh, telomeres. They're called telomeres. And it has been shown in science and scientific studies that your telomeres can tell you uh, your, the difference between your biological age and your chronological age. So your biological age um is if you are your body system is operating like a 30 year old when you're you are in fact 60 years old for example so your longevity can be told by these uh telomeres in 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 your chromosomes in your body um and it has been shown in science so if you maintain your body and sleep well because all your healing restoring is done at night when you're sleeping so it's like you're getting a service every night when you're sleeping. And this is super important. You need to take out the garbage to make room. Um, and it's the same with sleep. All this has happened at nighttime. Uh, all the garbage has been taken out. You're doing a detoxifying process at nighttime when you're asleep. And all your body is building back up again at nighttime as well. Only really in a deep phase of sleep. So it's really important to have quality sleep as opposed to quantity. Both are important, but quality, it's really important to emphasize quality as well. So in order to do anything well, you've got to understand the whole process first. So why is sleep important anyway? Well, there are so many levels that sleep impacts. So we've got our physical level. So uh, let's talk about our brain, for example. So our brain, um, it processes information. Um, but we take information in first. So we learn now, if we've too much stuff going on in our head, we can only take so much in. And have you ever crammed for an exam and your brain just gets stuffed? You keep reading and reading, and reading. No more information is going in. So you need to have a sleep in order to wipe that slate clean. And what happens when we're sleeping at nighttime is all that memory, all that uh, information you've taken in, if it's important, it gets flagged as important. And if it's important, it will go to your long term memory. This only happens in our REM part of our sleep. So that's really important for our long term memory. And then also to recall it. So the next day, if you're a student, for example, and you're doing an exam, you've heard of people cramming all night. And it's the worst thing that you can do, especially if you're doing an exam the next day, because your recall function just does not work. Um, and you will literally have a blank uh, brain. So learn and process and information, memory, all very, very important parts of, of, um, of brain function. Also cognitive function in terms of making our decisions, um, planning stuff, deciding stuff. All this is really an important part of our cognitive function. And you may um, remember, you know, if you woke up exhausted any particular day and you just can't seem to decide anything um you just can't seem to make a decision about something and it's just really 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 difficult so this is another very important part of our cognitive function as well our mood regulation so obviously you're going to be in bad form you, you are you're going to be in bad form if you're not getting enough sleep you're going to be more irritable because um people are going to irritate you more easily uh, events or whatever are going to trigger you a lot more easily and this is because we have an emotional center in our brain it's called the amygdala and this is actually amplified it's more sensitive it's very sensitized um, especially after not getting enough sleep by up to 60 percent so you can imagine um not getting enough sleep it can really uh, affect your mood as well and Sleep and depression are kind of the bio, they're related, um, they're like bi-directional. Um, they, you could be depressed from some event or whatever, and that could cause you not to sleep. But also if you don't sleep enough, this can cause you to be depressed as well. So, so just important to, to know that. Strengthening your immune system, I touched on that. So your immune system is really, really important. Um, and most of our killer cells are made at nighttime when we're asleep. Um, 
so many people are not aware of this. There are so many studies out there now. Also, if you do come down with a cold or a flu, it will take you a lot longer to recover. Um, you may find that if you've had a really bad dose of the flu and you're like six, eight weeks still trying to get over it. Um, and a lot of that time could be because you're still on the go, trying to get work done, not giving your body time to heal and repair. You do actually sleep a lot more when you're not well and your body does this on purpose. Your body makes you tired on purpose so that you will rest so that you can recover. So your body is really, really intelligent. Don't underestimate your body and really listen to your body. Clearing toxins in your brain. So it has been shown in a lot of scientific studies too that we have this uh, protein, a toxic protein in the brain. And uh, it has been shown in patients of Alzheimer's that this builds up. Now, there's a lot of other reasons why Alzheimer's occurs. But this is one um, thing that has been shown. People who do not sleep very well over a period of time uh, consistently, um, this buildup of toxins uh, is built up in the brain, these beta amyloids. And uh, really what happens at nighttime and it's, this has only been discovered in the last 15 years, 20 years maybe or so of, of sleep research, parts of the brain actually shrink and our cerebral spinal fluid. So it's just like a clear fluid from the, the spine and it goes around the brain at nighttime, literally washing out all these toxins. So that is why sleep is so, so important. And um, there's so much more reasons why I could tell you why sleep is so important. They'd probably be the main ones. Um, so it's physical, emotional, spiritual even, um, because, you know, we have to have a purpose in our life, something that gets us up out of bed in the morning as well. And if you're tired and just not in the humor, you're not really going to have a purpose. So it just affects on all levels. It also affects relationships and um, how you relate to people. And we know that relationships are super important. It's part of our nature to be connected to the people that we love, to our family, to our community. Um, part of the tribe, um, as it were, back in the day, um, if you weren't, if you were rejected out of the tribe, you more than likely weren't going to survive. So connection relationships, super, super important. So what happens when we don't get enough sleep? So we are going to have a very weakened immune system. Our immune system can actually be weakened up to 70%, believe it or not, depending on how strong your immune system is. And if you don't have any other underlying problems, but between 50 and 70% in one night of sleeping five hours or less. I'm not joking. This has been shown in scientific studies. Uh, Matthew Walker, if you look up some of his uh, research, he, he does state that. Um, absolutely uh, startling uh, facts blocked coronary arteries as well this also happens and um, as a result and I do talk a lot about weight gain uh, in relation to uh, not sleeping properly this is one of the reasons one of the contributory factors of weight gain when we don't sleep properly and it can lead to coronary arteries heart attacks strokes uh, raised blood sugar which can lead to type 2 diabetes as well all this um, and a lot of people who have type 2 diabetes um, do not sleep very well. Alzheimer's, we spoke about that as well. Alzheimer's, depression and anxiety. And they are absolutely massive. And right now, people are worried. People are afraid. And if we're not sleeping well, this is just going to impact it more and more. So it's super important that we get a good night's sleep. So as to allow our body to create this resilience, uh, any resilience that goes. Because look, life happens. And it's really important that we have a very strong resilience and we have a purpose in our life as well. So that's super important. I love this. <laughs> I love this uh, slide. So anybody has anybody ever experienced this waking up first thing in the morning? You're as grumpy as anything. And you don't want to speak to anybody. Um, you have to have your cup of coffee before you even speak to anyone and you don't want anyone asking you any questions. You just want to be left alone. It takes you maybe two hours to wake up first thing in the morning. I remember working in an IT company and our IT director, he used to work an awful lot at home and he was a night owl. So he used to be up quite a lot during the night time. And he, if we had a problem first thing in the morning when we went into work, um, you know, the system might be down or whatever and we'd ring him. 
And what he would say to us is, give me 10 minutes, give me 10 minutes and I'll ring you back. Now I'm talking about orders were not able to go out. The whole system was down and he would not solve it unless he had his cup of coffee. <laughs> so that was his priority. He had to have his cup of coffee in the morning. So I always, I always remember that when I see that slide. So yeah, it's true. We can have a, a bad morning when we wake up. And I, I just thought I'd throw that slide in there for a bit of a laugh because um, this is reality and we don't sleep well every single night and that's okay, but we do want to sleep well th for the majority. So that's that's the aim here. So our physical health, I'm just going to see here if, uh, let me see, let's make sure everyone is okay. John Fitzgerald is saying he, uh, you're a sleep apnea sufferer. Okay, John, we'll talk about that. Everyone's saying hello, brilliant. Okay, I'm just checking here making sure you are all okay. Brilliant. So let's talk about physical health. So hormone balance is really, really important. So I'm going to talk about circadian rhythm as well. And uh, hormone balance has a lot to do with circadian rhythm. So but at night time, two particular hormones and um, testosterone. So men in particular, now both men and women have testosterone, but men have more. And um, testosterone is known as the the strength hormone, it gives you strength, it gives you focus, um, endurance, all of that. But for men, men need to have a certain amount of sleep to have adequate levels of testosterone. And if they don't have adequate levels, uh, I think this is a Matthew Walker study again, he said that if you have, um, I think it was five hours or less of sleep, then you it was basically a, a night of sleep deprivation, I think it was five hours or less, then you have the levels of testosterone uh, of someone 10 years their age so in other words you can age 10 years at least if this is a continuous cycle of you not sleeping sleeping there uh, for the adequate amount of time that your body actually requires another finding that I found with testosterone is you need to have at least three hours of consecutive sleep before your testosterone starts getting made so if you have a lot of interrupted sleep your testosterone levels can be down as well so that's another factor as well the growth hormone um growth hormone is super important growth hormone is responsible for all our growing and repairing especially in children as well and the it's really important growth hormone works um with the insulin in the body insulin is um is a hormone that's required to get our glucose into the cells and if we have a lot of insulin in the body uh, it's going to have an, an impact on the on the growth hormone they have a if an adverse effect um so growth hormone is absolutely essential for all the healing and repairing and especially for for teenagers as well their 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 um reproductive systems are all grown as well so the growth hormone is really really important for all and they've loads kids have loads of, of growth hormone um when they're sleeping that's why it's really really important that's why they sleep quite an awful lot too because they're still growing your cardiovascular uh, blood sugar levels um, in relation to cardiovascular. So for many people, look, if you're not sleeping well at night time, it's going to cause a stress on your body. And there are two other hormones in your body that cause you to be hungry. And the reason for that is because if your body is tired, it's going to need more fuel, it's going to need more energy. And the thing is, when you're sleep deprived, your body is going to crave for foods. You're going to be hungry, but you're going to crave for foods, but the wrong types of food. Your body is going to crave for foods that have a lot of glucose in it. And your body is very, very clever. That's why you go for the cakes and the biscuits and the quick fixes when you're really, really hungry and when you're tired. This is going to increase your blood sugar levels. And if this is a continuous cycle, this can eventually lead to type 2 diabetes. And if you're not sleeping well, then uh, you are not going to effectively burn fat properly. Um, your insulin is going to be all over the place. And this is all as a result of not sleeping well. So there's a massive impact. I do a whole lecture on waking and sleep. Um, so it's really, really pretty significant. It does have a massive impact on your sugar levels because when your body is stressed, you have more cortisol in your body. And cortisol is our stress hormone. And although we do need cortisol, cortisol is not entirely the body. So it usually gets a bit of a bad rap. 
but uh, it's when the cortisol is out of sync. And I will be speaking about cortisol in relation to the circadian rhythm. Um, so cortisol makes glucose available for uh, fuel uh, to deal with the stress response, uh, which is if you're tired, you're going to be more on alert. Um, uh, and this is why your amygdala is more amplified and you're, you're easily triggered and all of that. Your gut health, your microbiome is super important. Your microbiome does so much more than you can imagine. And the reason why I talk about gut health is because your microbiome actually makes neurotransmitters that are involved in sleep. So one of the biggest ones is our serotonin and serotonin and melatonin. So serotonin we know is our feel good hormone. Serotonin, if we have ample amounts of serotonin, it makes us feel good. So people who do not sleep very well over a long period of time are inclined to be depressed or have bad mood. Um, and this is because ultimately they don't have enough serotonin in their body. Now we do need serotonin. It's a precursor for our sleep hormone, which is melatonin. So melatonin is made out of serotonin. So it's super important that we do have enough serotonin in our body. So we want our microbiome to be healthy. And the microbiome is really your good bacteria. So we do also have bad bacteria in our body, but as long as we have the right balance, then everything is going to be in order. It's when we have this dysbiosis, dysbiosis is an imbalance when we have more bad bacteria, it's gonna cause all sorts of gut problems, leaky gut, leaky gut can go systemic, you can end up having brain fog and uh, problems in the brain. There is the gut brain connection because all the neurotransmitters feed into the brain. Um, and this is going to affect the sleep centers in the brain as a result. So again, this is a massive, massive area. I just want to give you a touch point on why the microbiome is really, really important in connection to sleep. So then the enteric nervous system. So that's the good brain connection. And, uh, and we spoke about serotonin, and melatonin. Brilliant. OK, great. So brain function. So I think I touched on an awful lot of this already. So our emotions and our behavior. So we behave uh, in a certain way. If if we are working from our amygdala, our emotion center, or our um, our uh, reptilian brain, that's what I'm trying to think of. When we work from that area, this is all based on learnings from the past. So um, this is usually based on safety. So our brain is tr always trying to keep us safe. But if we're conscious and we're aware of what's going on around us, then we can be more in control of how we respond. Now, when we don't sleep very well at nighttime, the conscious part of our brain, which is our prefrontal cortex here, this is where the conscious part of our brain is. So this is where we have our focus, where we can make good decisions, where we can plan. When we're tired, this part of the brain, the blood flow is not really going to this part of the brain. So we tend to operate from the back part of our brain, our reptilian brain. And this is why our emotions and our behavior um, can be affected. They're really as a result of the information coming from the back, the reptilian part and the amygdala, that part of the brain, the limbic system. So that's a really, really important one to, to be aware of when we're tired. Also, um, our reaction times, they slow down quite an awful lot. So there's been lots of studies done with sleep deprived people. Um, uh, and if, for example, if you're driving a car, for example, and somebody runs out in front of you, your reaction time to put your foot on the brake is going to be a lot slower. So um, it's not good to drive machinery or cars or anything like that when you're sleep deprived. It is so, so dangerous. And you're also in danger of micro sleeps. And how long does it take for you to have a crash? It just takes you two seconds for you to take your eyes off the road. And that's what a micro sleep is. It can be two seconds or it can be 10 seconds. Have you ever driven home and you do not remember the journey home? <laughs> because you know, by the part of your automatic brain might be an operation there, but you may have gone into a bit of a micro sleep. So, um, so yeah, it's really, really crucial. Um, the brain clears itself at nighttime, this detoxification process, we spoke about that, and we spoke about learning and memory as well. So learning, taking the information in, really having it stick uh, in the brain. Because have you ever found yourself reading a book and 
it just went in one and out the other. So you have to read it again. So um, if you're tired, you may find it difficult to read a page. You might have to read it a couple of times for it to stick. So learning, it's really important to have a good night's sleep, especially if you're learning for exams or not like that. You want the information to stick. And there was a study done in a, in, a, in a school of medicine, the University of Pennsylvania. They took some students. There were just five college students, but they were sleep deprived for 24 hours. And their learning and their memory ability was reduced by 40%. That's massive, 40%. Now, stress is another big part as well. And in this day and age, so many of us are experiencing stress. And many of you are probably aware of the stress response. Thousands of years ago, when we were cavemen, and our stress response consisted of running away from a lion or a tiger or something like that. And as soon as they went away, we went back to our normal day and the stress response was turned off and but nowadays stress is we have so many more things going on we are so distracted we have so much stuff going on in our lives it could be somebody who's annoyed which it could be it could be someone who's annoyed it could be an angry boss it could be somebody who drove out in front of you in traffic um, it could be a nagging child. It could be so many things that's causing you stress. The current situation that we have at the moment, uncertainty, worry, this all causes stress. I just had somebody phoning me on, but ringing me on the phone there. Sorry about that. So there's so much stuff in our lives that can cause stress at the moment. And the problem is that it's constantly on. Our stress response is constantly on. So what is the consequences of that? Well, when our stress system is on, our immune system is shut down, our digestive system is shut down, our reproductive system is shut down. Because these systems are not important when we're running away from a tiger that's just about to kill us. Okay, so that's what your body is. So we've inherently have this safety mechanism, this stress response. And it's exactly the same. The body doesn't know the difference. It just responds exactly the same. That's how we are wired. And so when we're experiencing stress, all these different systems in our body are shut down, including the immune system, because if you have a virus in your immune system, it's not going to kill you in the next five minutes like the lion could. So your body shuts down the immune system. It's not important. So therefore, all your killer cells and everything else that goes on in your immune system is not working optimally. So we need to mind our stress. We really need to be careful and be not be careful. We need to be aware of when we're stressed and do lots of things during the day that we can practice to love ourselves, really take our power back, really feel in power, really feel in control, do things ourselves to keep us healthy and uh, have our wellness. Healthy, being healthy is great, but being having wellness in our lives as well is super important, and uh, because this can all prevent us from being sick, but also live an optimal life as well. So stress is a huge part. It's absolutely massive. And um, stress just turns that cortisol on, more blood sugar issues, more diabetes, more obesity. There's so many people that are just uh, six out of 10 people that are either obese or overweight in Ireland. And I think the figures are much the same around the world. And obesity can lead to um, diabetes and all sorts of cardiovascular problems, heart disease, stroke. Uh, it's, it's just a vicious circle. So the third thing that you can do to help you with your sleep success is um, so many people wake up during the night time. And what's the first thing they do? They go and they have a look to see what time it is. Why? Because usually we want to see how many hours we have left to sleep. That's really the only reason why we'd want to know the time. We're not going to, we don't have to be anywhere. So the only reason why we look at our clock is to do the mental maths and figure out how much time we have left to sleep before we have to get up. So the one thing that you do not do in the middle of the night is do not look at your clock because all you're doing is creating anxiety. What happens when you create anxiety? Cortisol is switched on again. Cortisol is your wake up hormone. And you're going to get anxious and worried and there's absolutely no need to be worrying in the middle of the night about something like that. So that is a really crucial, crucial tip. And um, don't have a clock beside your bed that you can see just at a glance. 
Uh, many people keep their mobile phones beside their bed. Turn your mobile phone on flight mode, by the way. Um, that's really important if you do need to use your, your mobile phone as an alarm clock. Um, but do not look at the clock because that's all you're going to be doing. It's going to create anxiety by doing the mental maths. So that's really, really important. So many people ask me, how much sleep do I actually need? Um, well, it depends on your age. So for healthy adults, between seven and nine hours. And our sleep cycles also, um, normally they're between 90 and 120 minutes. Um, but they can, um, there are a lot more if you're a child, obviously, because you sleep for a lot more. So therefore, your sleep stages are going to be a lot longer as well. So I'll quickly go through the stages of sleep. And these are really important just to give you an idea of what goes on in your body and your brain at night time when you're sleeping. So stage one and two, this is really a very light stage of sleep. And your breathing slows down, all your muscles start to relax, your body temperature reduces. This is this is really significant, your body temperature. Body temperature is part of your circadian rhythm because um, even though it's only very slight, throughout the 24 hour day, it increases and decreases at various different times during the day. And this is natural. So your temperature may be higher in the morning than it is at nighttime. And this is natural. This is okay. So after stage two, you will start to lose your senses. So when we're awake, we can smell things, we can hear things, um, and you can still hear things when you're in a light stage of sleep um, in the background. But when you go into stage three, this is your brain waves are slowing down more and more and more, and stage three is deep sleep. So this is where you lose all your sense of smell. That's why um, these fire alarms, smoke alarms are so loud um, to wake you up out of your sleep at nighttime because your senses are kind of lost and your sense of smell and all that is, is gone when you because you're going more inwards. Um, so stage three is where the growth hormone is released. And this is where all the healing and repairing is done. Stage three, it's also, you may see in some reports that stage three and four, stage three and four are the same. They're both a deep sleep, really. Um, so this is where all your killer cells are made, part of your immune system. This is where your brain is detoxifying itself. All the detoxification process, this happens at nighttime. <clears throat> and then we have our REM sleep. So REM sleep is obviously, it's where our dream sleep is. is. Uh, it stands for, uh, ra God, rapid eye movement. I nearly forgot what it stood for. <laughs> rapid eye movement. That's what REM sleep stands for. And this is because our eyes tend to move. It's the only part of our body that moves at night when we're asleep because um, the rest of our body is paralyzed. And this is really to prevent us from acting out our dreams. So if you're dreaming of going for a run somewhere, you're not literally moving your muscles and arms in the bed. Or otherwise, you could hit somebody if you have a sleeping partner or something like that. So uh, it's done on purpose. So that's um, a little bit about the, the sleep stages and um, problems. We do encounter a lot of problems um, from time to time and um, events pop up in our life. And also, um, you know, you may get like a cold or a flu that will prevent you from sleeping properly. Sinus problems, pain, uh, arthritis, back pain, lots of different things that can contribute to sleep problems. And there's lots that you can do um, to help you with that. And one of the things I say is always have a good mattress on a good pillow because this is your sleep equipment. Um, but today I'm just going to talk about sleep apnea. And sleep apnea is um, it's a it's a cessation of breath. That's how it's um there's two types of sleep apnea. One is central, and this is where the um the signals, the brain signals aren't working properly, but the more common one is the obstructive sleep apnea, and this is where all the airways are kind of closed off. Um, and literally what happens uh, many times during the night is you will find it difficult to breathe in your sleep and there might be kind of a gagging or a, 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 um, a gasp um, during the night time. Now, I remember my husband um, with his sleep apnea and uh, I always remember and it frightened the life out of me. And it's it's no joke. Like, it's no joke. I used to have to check his chest. I didn't know what sleep apnea was, by the way, at this stage. But I used to have to check his chest to see if it was moving because he literally stopped breathing. And he could go 20 seconds or more even without breathing. And I used to have to record him at my time. 
because he didn't believe me. I used to have to record him at night time uh, to prove to him like that he was making these weird noises at night time. But it turned out anyway that he had sleep apnea and it was only diagnosed later when he happened to be admitted to hospital for something else. Um, but the precursor that or the sign of that, a big sign of that is loud snoring. Now, we were never designed to snore because if you think about it back in the day when we were living in the caves, if you snored, right, then the line would know where you are type of thing. We were never designed to. There's no reason for us to snore. And um, so it makes sense. So if you do snore, especially chronically or loud, I would highly, highly advise you to go to your doctor and ask for a sleep test, a sleep lab test done. Uh, just to check it out because if you leave a sleep apnea go untreated what's really happening there is the oxygen is being deprived to your brain and you know your brain it's only a three pound lump of blob right it's it's your brain but it does so much in your body and if you don't have the oxygen it needs oxygen and glucose um and it's made out of water primarily and fat so you that's what you need to keep your brain healthy and um if you don't have oxygen, then your brain can't function properly. It's you're going to wake up with brain fog or feel like you're drunk in the morning. If you ever wake up feeling like that, even though you've slept for the eight hours or whatever, seven or eight hours, and you think you've had a good night's sleep, if you're still waking up like that, there's a possibility you may have sleep apnea and not even realize it. So that's another sign. Um, uh, brain fog is a big is a big one um, in the morning, first thing. So sleep apnea can... Um, lead to all sorts of problems and I'm talking maybe 10 years down the road it depends how your lifestyle is in general but it can take 10 years for a disease to develop um, and if it's a habitual way of you living um, then you know if it's consistent then you know it can develop into a disease uh, and something chronic so really really do go get it checked out if you do suspect sleep apnea or if you suspect your, your partner uh, because there are so many people that are undiagnosed and have no idea and it can lead to um, heart attacks and strokes later on down down the down the road so I really really emphasize uh, that to be checked out and that's actually a picture of one of the CPAP uh, it's a continuous positive air pressure that's what it stands for it's basically just uh, some air that that um, it keeps it helps to keep the airways open, basically. Um, some people swear by it, some people can't use it. It takes a lot uh, with adjusting the sentence, maybe for some people, but some people swear by it as well. And um, so now the circadian rhythm, I just want to touch on the circadian rhythm and environmental influences. So this is your 24 hour uh, biological process. Every living creature has a biological clock and every single cell in your body um, has these body clocks. And really it's primarily influenced by daytime and nighttime. So this is why I always say to people, when you wake up first thing in the morning, so you've got your cortisol highest in the morning, it dissipates during the daytime and then your melatonin is very high in the evening. This is part of your circadian rhythm. And, but where our stress levels are at the moment, our cortisol is high all the time, whereas it's supposed to naturally dip during the day and it doesn't. Um, so a lot of things, um, your digestion, your like there is a right time to eat. Um, a body was never designed to eat at night time, for example. And eating food is actually a cue as well for uh, when you can, when you should go asleep as well. It's a cue to your body as well. Um, so that's why it's important not to eat three hours or so before bed, especially a big meal. Uh, and protein it takes a long time to if you eat a lot of meat before bed that takes a lot long time to break down and digest and your whole metabolism slows down at night time so if you're eating a heavy meal and going to bed <clears throat> it's literally fermenting in your stomach turning into alcohol then you get brain fog in the morning and uh, all sorts of other problems as well so your circadian rhythm is primarily influenced by daylight so i always recommend to people the very first thing, if you can't sleep well or you're having difficulty sleeping, is to get out and get sunshine as early in the morning, especially before the sun rises, when it has those yellow and blue tones um, because it's at a solar angle. And this is the best time um, to get daylight and um, to, uh, to reset your circadian rhythm because it is actually reset every morning. Because what happens is when you get sunshine, 
there's another part of your body that says, okay, in 16 hours time now, the melatonin will be switched on. So it's kind of like a timer. Uh, it's just brilliant how the whole body works. And I can get into it so, so much more, but we're coming to the end. So in summary, I did speak to you about understanding sleep, why sleep is so, so important. Why sleep is just absolutely crucial. And it's so often overlooked. People talk about becoming healthy and they talk about eating the right foods, getting exercise, but sleep is often overlooked. And really primarily, I think it's because when we are eating the right foods and exercise and we're doing a plan or we're doing something and when you do something you get a result but with sleep you're doing nothing <laughs> so I think that's that's probably part of the reason why um, people don't really get how much beneficial sleep can be we also spoke about stress and how that imp can impact us as well and uh, really it's the whole cortisol response uh, we need to have that cortisol I, I showed you on the, the circadian the whole circadian rhythm where stress comes into it so when we're stressed that cortisol pump is continuously on uh, yeah continuously on how sleep works showed you a little bit about the, the sleep cycles at night time and just checking to see if everyone is okay yeah great great um sleep problems and sleep disorders and there's lots of sleep problems like there's restless legs and um there's, there's loads of different things um and I do go into them. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my upcoming program as well. But I do go into that in my upcoming program, Sleep Problems and Disorders, um, a little bit more in detail because we do encounter sleep problems, you know, um, from time to time. Uh, but really, it's the majority of the nights that we want to have good sleep. And that is very, very doable. We do have a natural ability to relax and we just need to get back to that again. And also the environment. Um, so really actually one thing i never mentioned about the environment that can affect our whole circadian rhythm is phones mobile phones the blue light um and if you've heard me talk before you you would have heard me talk about the blue light the blue light mimics uh sunshine uh daytime so the brain thinks that it's daytime and it gets confused that's ultimately what's happening also the phones have a dopamine effect as well dopamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter which keeps the brain stimulated. We do not want the brain to be stimulated at nighttime. It just keeps us addicted to our phones. And we're down that internet dark hole, if you like, and we just get lost. Um, so the dopamine effect, the, the blue light and the stimulate in the brain, um, it just keeps us addicted. So phones is a very big one. And then the Wi-Fi as well on the, the mobile phones, Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi in your house, turn it off at night. Um, especially 5G, they're very strong pulses and it has been shown to really have an impact right down to the cellular level, right down to the mitochondria and the cells. So, uh, so watch out for that as well. So I'm going to tell you really briefly and then I'm going to take some questions. So if you do have any questions, please get them ready or put them in the chat. I'd love to answer any questions um, if anyone has any questions. So I'll just tell you briefly while I'm waiting for you to put your questions in there. So my program is coming up. It's a 12 week live online program. It's a, it's a group coaching program. And there's six modules in the program. Um, module one is wake up to sleep. So really getting into why sleep is so important and waking up to the uh, realization of what sleep can do for you. But also we'll be doing some mindset stuff as well and um, how you relate yourself to sleep because this is really super important. We're also going to be talking about holistic health so how what we eat how we exercise our stress all these things how they also have a correlation with how well we sleep at night time and also the science of sleep so we'll be getting into a little bit of the brain centers uh, in this part and also um really the workings of sleep at, at night time so really that's really really an interesting one um, and then sleep problems so we'll be going into that in more depth as well and also environmental influences because there's so many different things that can impact us from uh, our daytime and I always say to people your sleep starts from the time you wake up in the morning and um, because your whole environment and your attitude um, has a massive impact on how well you're going to sleep that night so it's not just about your wind down routine it is so so much more than that and also sleep hygiene so these are all your habits um, and part of that is going to be your wind down routine that I will cover in that as well we also have six Q&A calls, so you can ask me anything. So there's six 
six modules. So um, after every module, we have a, a Q and A call, and you can ask me anything you want. It's a whole group se uh, coaching session, and we can get right down to where you're having difficulties, and we can have a look at that. I have gotten some fantastic testimonials. This is Pat Slattery says Joanne has an incredible amount of knowledge. She really understands her clients' needs and can always come up with a solution. Um, and and he says she truly cares about serving her clients. I worked with Pat Slattery for a couple of years. He was my mentor. This is Leslie Feeker. I had the privilege of speaking on stage with Leslie a couple of years ago in Dublin. He's from Toronto and uh, he's a, a, a very successful entrepreneur. He says, attend one of Joanne's events and you'll come away amazed at what she knows about sleep and what you can learn about sleep. So this is the package that I'm doing. It is normally 997. You will see this on my website, Empowering Sleep Success. Um, oh, that's the wrong link that I have down there. It's Empowering Sleep Success. I'll give that to you on the next slide. Um, four nights, and it's in dollars. So if you are uh, in Ireland, it will be even less than that. Um, so you will get the 12 week live with me. You will also get some meditations. I actually do some EFT tapping, which uh, is very, very effective. Uh, you'll also get some aromatherapy recipes. So I am an, a, a professional aromatherapist. I'll give you a whole resources list as well if you want even more information. And you'll get uh, access to my Facebook group where we can you can post questions in there anytime and you will also get the help and support from the other members in the community. And you'll have access to all the materials, uh, lifetime access, as long as I'm alive <laughs> and my website is up. And also, I'm going to give you a copy of my ebook and my audio book. I do have that book on audio as well. You'll get sleep, a sleep diary, workbooks, guides, assessments, lots of uh, tools that you can use to assess your progress and really where you are and what it is that you need to focus on. That's really, really important because we're all individuals and we need to understand what it is we need. Also, some uh, supplements that you can take and food that you can um, that will help with sleep as well. So it starts the 25th of March. This is the introductory call. It will be every week uh, for about one hour, maybe slightly go over, I don't mind, but typically it'll be about a one hour uh, class. So you will have your module one, the 20th of November, and the following week, the whole session is devoted to Q and A, um, and that's how it will work. So I'm gonna come back to people uh let me see john you were saying that you are a sleep apnea sufferer so john i presume if you know that you're a sleep apnea sufferer you're using the cpap machine i'm i'm presuming that um and an awful lot of people um who have the sleep apnea i have seen people reversing it um the sleep apnea and really I suppose there are some people that are overweight. Um, and really, if if you look at the neck, if the neck size typically on a man, I think it's 17 and a half inches. Um, that's a sign um, because it can put pressure on the airways and the trachea. And um, so, uh, and not everybody who's obese has sleep apnea. There are 10 people as well, but most people have a, a bit of weight that uh, contributes to it. Um, so maybe that's something to consider. Um, and I am aware that not being able to sleep properly has uh, an impact on, on weight as well. Um, but getting up at the same time every morning, even if you don't sleep well at night time, because this resets your whole circadian rhythm. That's the very first thing that I say to everybody. Um, because, um, you know, getting up at the first, getting up uh, as early in the morning as you can. Um, well, not as early, I mean, I'm not talking about 5 a.m. in the morning or anything like that, but consistently the same time every single morning because this is a cue. The body loves rhythm and the body loves routine, and it's a cue for the body then when you're doing it consistently. So, um, uh, so do that. Um, and uh, because if you're sleeping better at night time, it will help help with other issues as well there but also uh, I, I presume you're using the CPAP machine um, if you know you are a sleep apnea sufferer um, but continue that treatment I know people who don't um, like to use the machine but I would highly recommend um, and in the meantime if if weight is an issue really have a look at that like seriously really have a look at that as well. Uh, Gwenel says I have hypermobile oh this is your you have a problem with your back okay 
Um, and it gives you problems when you're asleep and then you have pain as well. The pain will wake you up and then you have trouble, trouble going back to sleep. Yeah, so Gweno, um, I would firstly advise, and, I, and I'm sorry to hear that you have that, Gweno. Uh, I, know, I know you, Gweno, anyway, very well. We've, we've spoken before. Um, so, Gweno, what I would recommend is the very first thing, anyway, is definitely have a good mattress, okay, um, to support the rest of your, like, to support your, your, uh, your bones okay and your the other joints in your body um because if your body if your spine because your spine has a natural curvature and if the mattress is not supporting that so so many people i know wake up in the morning and they have a sore neck and what have you you know the creak in the neck and it's usually from the position of how they're sleeping so your position of sleeping is really really important and uh, you want to support the natural curves in your body as much as you can so get a really good uh, pillow that will support that curve in your neck first of all and if you are a back sleeper I don't know if you sleep on your back or your side but it's really important if you sleep on your back that your head is straight as well so a lot of people who sleep on their back they'll put their head to the side like this and that's causing a strain on the uh, the cervical area as well um, and that's no good so if you're a side sleeper ideally you want the whole um uh, spine to be in the right position the right alignment when you're sleeping at night time because you want to support that spine so getting a good mattress um maybe invest in a wedge for underneath your feet that will help um especially for back pain lower back and um, raising the legs up stops the pull of the muscles on the hip area which which are connected to the um all the sciatica area the sciatica nerve and all is affected to um is it is attached to your spine the lower spine um, and all this just affects everything so if you have your legs up on a wedge at night time it helps to reduce the pressure on the lower back and all those other different areas as well and help with the support of your spine so i hope that helps uh gweno and i'm just conscious of the time there now so johnny says back pain at night as well um you take magnesium magnesium is fantastic because um magnesium does over 300 jobs in the body and um so many people are deficient in magnesium so it's really really important that we do have uh that we're taking supplements of, of and good quality don't go to the supermarket and buy um stuff there because it's not good quality you'll know by the price as well um so and even the health stores like you know some people go to the health stores but uh, I I use my own particular um, company for supplements that are even more superior than health shops. Um, so I don't want to say names or anything like that. But if you do want to contact me outside of this, I'll, I'll gladly have a conversation with you. But really what my message is, is to have good quality vitamins and minerals. Uh, and magnesium is the, what's it called? It's the tranquil, um, tranquilizer. Yeah, it's called the night tranquilizer because it really does help to relax everything. And it does so many jobs in the body as well. So magnesium is great. But Joni, I would say to you as well is to get a wedge. Or if you don't have, um, you can get them on Amazon or various different places. You can just use a couple of pillows underneath um, the, the knees and the lower leg. And it also helps with the blood flow and circulation as well. It gives your heart a bit of a rest as well at night time. So um, weight is my problem. Yeah, getting it down is my motivation. Yeah, motivation change. Yeah, John absolutely i really hear you i really hear you and it's a vicious circle as well when you're not sleeping well because so many people are on diets and, and i don't like the word diet but but just eating healthy foods let's say and um if you're not sleeping well at night time the um the whole metabolism is not working properly and uh your body is um obviously there's more cortisol in the body and blood sugar issues which contribute to weight gain and it's just a vicious circle so we do need to get as much sleep as we can um and maybe see a nutritionist or i'm sure that you're doing what you need to do but what i would say to you is um i believe in intermittent fasting i'm just going to turn my light on because it's very dark bear with me one second intermittent fasting is uh used quite an awful lot by people and but if you are doing intermittent fasting and um, like if you're healthy but if you have any underlying conditions obviously see a nutritionist or someone who specializes in that but i do encourage one type of intermittent fasting and that's fasting at night time because we naturally are supposed to fast for 12 hours overnight now i would even go a little bit further if i can 
uh, what I do, I, I'm, I'm saying to you, if you can, um, maybe 14 hours or 16 hours, I wouldn't go beyond that. Uh, because the longer you can fast, it's given your whole digestive system a chance to reset itself. Um, that's what you're doing. And that can really, really help with weight gain as well. Also, going for a run or doing your exercise regime first thing in the morning before breakfast, because that is when it will tend to burn more fat rather than glucose. Um, so there are some suggestions if you wanted to try them, if that works for you. Um, let me see what else is there. Gwen has gone to another event. Okay, great, great, great. And you can, this, the replay, this will be going out um, as well later on this evening. Ja, you do use, I'm reading this all backwards. <laughs> you, do, you do use a CPAP, great. Okay, great. Let me see anybody else, any other questions? Okay, great, 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 great. Fantastic. Okay, I think I've answered most of the questions there. So guys, look, um, empoweringsleepsuccess.com is where you can go. Actually, and I just put up my... Uh, offer I forgot to put up the offer uh, that's you should see on your screen there now that's the offer coming up um yeah so you can just click on that if you wanted to go and have a look it's more information on that page um uh, or empowering sleep success.com that, that's where you get more information as well um I really do hope you enjoyed this webinar this evening uh we are over by seven minutes I just want to really thank you for your time this evening I hope you got uh, a lot out of this and uh, feel free to go onto my website, joannecallahan.com, J-O-H-A-N-N, -N, uh, joannecallahan.com. And I do a free 15-minute uh, consultation uh, with you if you want to find out any more information or any way that I can help you. And also, what else do I have coming up on the 22nd of February? So that's next Monday. Yeah, I am working with a lovely lady, Caroline McDonough, who is a nutritionist as well. Um, so we're actually working together on a collaboration um, uh, sleep and nutrition course. Um, so really to get the best out of your lifestyle and um, through sleep and nutrition. So she is an incredible lady uh, with lots and lots of knowledge and lots of experience. So that's coming up on the 22nd. Uh, YourHolisticAcademy.com. That's where you get all the information because I am doing it through the Your Holistic Academy. So and also look out for my six week podcast uh, sleep, Corona sleep, Corona sleep, and that's going to be coming up on the 10th of March. So watch out for my Facebook page where I'll be posting all the links for that as well. Okay, folks, have a wonderful evening. Just going to go back quickly to chat, see if anybody else has any last minutes. Everyone's just saying thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, great. You're very welcome, John. Thanks. Uh, so John Fitzgerald and John Donnelly. John Donnelly is the man from Your Holistic Academy. Uh, the visionary behind it, an incredible man. So you're all very welcome. And again, as I say, uh, you know where I am to reach out to me if you want to discuss anything further with me. Okay. Have a wonderful evening, folks. Take care and sleep well. Bye now.